Today, we're going to talk about the virgin birth or the Immaculate Conception. This doctrine is heavily promoted through Catholicism and many Christianity sets of religion and so forth. But when we really look at history, how did the church or the Catholic Church, Rome, come up with the concept of the virgin birth? We know the concept of the divine mother or mother goddess worship and child worship was heavy in ancient Egypt in Babylon or the mother goddess and divine child, which all stems from the ancient Babylonian comedic mystery religion. But how did this enter into the scriptures? So we're going to take a look into this and use the scriptures and other sources of books to come to a conclusion. Now, we all know the old saying, the bigger the crowd, the dumber the people, which is the mass deception. And usually in times of large crowds or information, there's usually a lot of error and zealous among certain cults, which we call religions. So we have to remember that the scriptures or Bible was not written by the so-called white men or Caucasian. It's through the ignorance of our people not remembering our time period and rulership in the British Isles slash Europe. I get it, you know, a lot of our people have been miseducated and believe that we only come from a certain part of Africa and that the so-called white man or Caucasian taught our people how to read the Bible. But when you look at the British history of the British Isles and Europe, it tells a different story due to the age of discovery, imperialism, and so forth. The Bible is basically a record of the Hebrews law history and prophecy even the new testament the new testament is just a retelling of the covenant and the promises in the old testament the gentiles of the new testament are the israelites we must understand that the letters of paul and so forth were only addressed to the israelites that were scattered among the various nations so the book is very exclusive not inclusive it is a record of the hebrews of the people being assimilated into many captivities and calling themselves by words and proverbs by many other nations that are in astonishment or know who they are historically so to get back on point the virgin birth or immaculate conception is a false doctrine how did it creep its way into the scriptures is it scripturally sound you know, we have to look into this. We also have to realize that a lot of people were taught, you know, of the virgin birth. I myself was taught this at a young age. But, you know, with colloquialisms and understanding certain literature and the etymology of words, we have to use, you know, our context clues and we have to do some investigation to understand that we cannot read the Bible from a modern lens point of view. We have to look at it as an ancient book or a book of antiquity. So we have to understand that words change over time. That's why I said colloquialisms and so forth. The Hamishiach or Christ of the scriptures was not a globalist figure. He was a nationalistic savior to his nation, that being the nation of Israel, the two split kingdoms. So now a lot of people are worshiping Horus or Haru, which is the god of this world, and among many other different names people attest to. But we're going to look up um, the word virgin to understand its many different meanings and so forth. So we're at Adam line, and it says virgin, 12th century, unmarried or chaste woman noted for religious piety and having a position and reverence in the church from Anglo-French in Old French, Virgin, Virgin, Virgin Mary, from Latin, Virginium, nominative Virgo, maiden, unwedded girl or woman, also an adjective, fresh, unused, also meaning young woman in a state of inviolate chastity is recorded from century 1300, also applied since early 14th century. To a chaste man, meaning naive or inexperienced person, is attested from 1953. The adjective is recorded from the 1550s 
in the literal sense, figurative sense, of pure untainted is attested from the 13th century. Okay, now we're going to the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 600 and 601, the definition of a virgin. Number one, a young unmarried woman. We can find this in Genesis chapter 24 and 16, Exodus 22 and 16, 2 Samuel 13 and 2. So now on page 601, it says a young woman of marriageable age, whether married or not. Genesis chapter 24, verse 43, Songs of Solomon 1 and 3, 6 and 8, Isaiah 7 and 14, etc. So right here, they're letting us know that whether a woman of marriageable age, a young woman, whether she's married or unmarried, she was still considered a virgin. So now we're at the new Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. And it states, 5959, Alma, damsel made virgin. I repeat, damsel made or virgin. We know that virgin is a Greek word. So now we're back at Etymaline. Damsel, early 13th century, young unmarried woman, especially a maiden of gentle birth, also made in waiting, handmaiden, assisting a lady from Anglo-French, a woman of noble birth, young lady. So now we're at the word maid. 12th century, a unmarried woman, usually young, the virgin Mary. I repeat, a unmarried woman, usually young, the virgin Mary. So we have to look at it from a logical point of view. The Hebrews or Israelites had certain marriage rites and ceremonies because you couldn't just sleep with a woman like you do nowadays. Back then, you know, sleeping around and being, you know, a whore or a whoredom was not allowed, you know. So we have to take that in consideration and understand the context of what, you know, the marital or obligations to what marriage, you know, was about. So we have to remember that the woman was considered property in the ancient days. You know, a father wouldn't just let his daughter go out there and whore around or sleep with any man. You know, that would be a dishonor to the family lineage and name, unlike today's modern times. So as we can see, the original definition of a virgin or Alma, which is damsel or maid of a young woman of marriageable age, whether married or not, had nothing to do with someone's sexual history, as we were taught in the Western world. So a young woman will be referred to as a virgin, whether she was married or not. You got to remember when reading this about Mary being a virgin, it simply means that she was a young maiden or damsel. So now we're going to read Matthew chapter one, verse 18 through 23. I'm going to try to break down the particular or these particular verses. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ or Yahweh Shai or Yeshua was on the wise when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost or spirit or Ruach HaKodesh. So we're going to look at the word espouse mid 15th century to take as spouse Mary, Mary taken marriage. OK, a offering perform a right promise secretly, hence to engage oneself by ritual act, extended sense of adopt, embrace, a cause, party, etc. So now that we understand what his spouse means, when as his mother Mary was his spouse to Joseph, at this point Mary was engaged to Joseph before they came together. The majority of people stumble in the understanding here because they assume that this is speaking about before Joseph and Mary had physical relations or consummation. What this is speaking about is the coming together for a Hebrew or Israelite wedding ceremony. So I'm going to touch on this in a few moments. Verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, 
thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua or Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin or damsel or maid, which is an unmarried or marriageable woman of a young age, shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which shall be interpreted as God with us. So when Mary was found with child of the Holy Spirit, when it states Mary was found with a child of the Holy Spirit, or Ruach HaKodesh, this does not mean that the Holy Spirit, which is a feminine spirit, impregnated Mary. This means that the child that was in Mary's womb was a child that was filled with the Holy Spirit from birth. And how do we know this? Ecclesiasticus chapter 1 verse 14 in the Apocrypha, which they took out of the King James Bible. But we can find this in the 1611 King James Bible. Verse 14, to fear the most high is the beginning of wisdom. And it was created with the faithful in the womb. She has built the everlasting foundation with men. She is a metaphor for wisdom. And wisdom or she shall continue with their seed, which is the sperm. Okay. To fear the most high is fullness of wisdom and filleth man with her fruits. Wisdom or she filleth all their houses with things desirable and the garners with her increase. The fear of the Most High is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish, both which are gifts of the Most High, and enlarges their rejoicing that love him. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding, standing and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. The root of wisdom is to fear the Most High, and the branches thereof are long life. So now we're at the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 17 and 18. And thy counsel who has known, except thou give wisdom and sent thy Holy Spirit from above. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. Okay, so the fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is the Holy Spirit according to the precept of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 17. And it was created with the faithful in the womb. The scripture states that the Holy Spirit is present with the Most High's faithful from the time they are conceived in the womb or the matrix. This gives us understanding as to what it means to be a child of the Holy Spirit or Ruach HaKodesh. So now we're going to jump into the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 through 38. When you read the account in the book of Luke, you can clearly see that Mary was not yet pregnant with the Hamishiach. And it reads, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God or the Most High into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, which we now know as a unmarried or married young marriageable woman, was engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin or damsel or maid name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of solution this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with the Most High. And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Verse 32, and he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come unto thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also 
that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with the Most High nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. To a virgin, or damsel, or maid, a spouse, to be married to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Notice that it states that Joseph was of the house of David. As attested to in the scriptures that the Hebrews traced their genealogy from father to son, the Y chromosome. But we know in Christianity, they promote the understanding of Mary being of the house of David. Rarely do you hear Joseph lineage linking to that of David. Why is this significant? Because the Bible prophesied that the Hamishiach would come through the seed, which is the sperm of a man, the scepter of David. We will touch on this a little bit later on. So looking back at the scripture, it says that Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be seeing I know not a man? So we got to remember at this point of time, Joseph and Mary had not yet had physical relations. The angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God. When it states that the power of the high shall overshadow thee, most believe this means the spirit of the most high impregnated Mary. This can be broken down by simply just looking at the definition of the word overshadow. So now we're going to look up the word overshadow to cast a shadow over. Here are some more definitions. Be greater in significance than the tragedy overshadowed the couple's happiness. Synonyms dominant eclipse. Overshadow verb cast a shadow upon a tall tree overshadowed the house. Overshadow make it appear small by comparison. Synonyms shadow or dwarf. So as we can see, the word overshadowing or overshadow has nothing to do with sexual intercourse or impregnating someone. So now we should see that in the book of Luke, Mary had not yet physically dealt with Joseph. Yet the account in Luke comes after the account in Matthew, which is the account that shows that Mary and Joseph had already had physical relations. OK, and this is not happenstance. This is done by the Roman Catholic Church which practices the Babylonian comedic or ancient Egyptian mother goddess worship. Now you should see why they would try to push this doctrine upon the chosen. And when I mean the chosen, I'm talking about the people or the descendants of the scriptures or the nation of Israel. I'm not talking about all people per se, because the scriptures is pertaining to the chosen or the elect, the descendants of Israel, those who are meant to get it. And so you would see why you know, towards the end that um, a lot of people are confound and confused because mass deception, whether it is extremes, most likely you're in the wrong. So the mother goddess worship and divine child is in the scriptures. In order to promote this doctrine, you would need to place Matthew, the account first. Therefore, when you read the Luke account, you will automatically believe that Mary was already pregnant without having physical relations with Joseph. Now, when we go back to the book of Matthew to finish breaking down the understanding of how Joseph and Mary had physical relations. Now, in this modern society, which is Babylonian, most women in this society are Babylonian, whether they realize it or not. But we see that the husband or man is taken out of the home. The government is the daddy. But we see the promotion of single motherness. We see it with shows like Sweet and 16. Women are independent. They can do it on their own. And they promoted this nonsense to our women for decades. But when you take a man from the home, it's not a good thing. When young boys look up to athletes, rappers, drug dealers, and entertainers for role models, the role model starts in the home. The role model that that child should look after or look up to is his father, first and foremost.
And as it pertains to the Bible or scriptures, we also see the absence of the man from the home, that being Joseph. So when you read the Torah or you read the laws, you know that a man and a woman have to come together in consummation, which is sex or sleep, the royal scepter, which is the penis, the seed is the semen. That's how you produce in this life or this realm. Verse 19, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. As I mentioned earlier, when it states that Mary was found with child before they came together, this is meant Mary and Joseph had already conceived a child before having a traditional Hebrewic or Israelite ceremony of marriage. In order to understand why Joseph was told to put her away privily, you must first understand the law of an Israelite or Hebrewic wedding ceremony. And we find this in the Torah in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13, marriage violation. And it reads, if any man take a wife and go in unto her, which is sex, and hate her and give accusations of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. So when we go back to the word maid, it says a unmarried woman, usually young, the virgin Mary. And we know that virgin meant unmarried or married woman per se. Verse 15, then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. And lo, he has given accusations of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, which is an unmarried woman. And yet these are tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. And they shall immerse him a hundred shackles of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he has brought up a evil name upon a virgin of Israel. Notice how it refers to the young woman as a virgin, even after she has had physical relations with a man. And she shall be his wife and may not put her away all his days. But if this thing be true and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house and the man of her city shall stone her with stones that she die because she has wrought foley in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shall thou put evil away among you. So our ancestors did not play around back then. What do we see in the current society in the so-called black community? We see a lot of women that act like men and are proud to be whores and harlots and hoes, brag about how many men they slept with because they adhere to the, the liberal and Marxist agenda. We know in the hierarchy of things, it's the Caucasian Jew, the Caucasian, the so-called liberal white woman and the so-called liberal black woman, so-called liberal black man and the so-called black man or heterosexual is at the bottom of the totem pole. We are the dog of this society, the security dog, the minstrels, the entertainers per se. Isn't it ever so evident? Look around on social media. You see it with the passport bros, men going to different countries to find traditional women. I'm not knocking that at all. But at the same time, we have to understand that there's something wrong. There's something rotten in Denmark with the Western world, which we call America, AKA Babylon. This is prison, not a palace. We will not find righteousness in this land. So picking back up at the scriptures, then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. A sheet was given to the man in order to lay upon the bed. When the man and woman lay down and had physical relations or sex, 
the blood of the damsel's virginity would stain the sheets. The sheet basically was taken and shown amongst the families of the Israelites or the community who attended the ceremony to show that the young woman or virgin was untouched when he received her. Because we got to remember, virgin or alma means maid or damsel, unmarried or married. Picking back up at Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 20 and 21. But if this thing be true and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house and the man of her city shall stone her with stones that she die because she has wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shall thou put evil away from among you. If there was a situation in which tokens of the damsel's virginity be not found, if no blood which we see right here in the picture is represented or present on the sheet, then the damsel would be brought to the front of her father's house and stoned to death. So they didn't play around back then. Why is this important to know? Because Mary and Joseph already had sexual relations before the actual ceremony. There would be no possible way that Mary would have been able to present the tokens of her virginity. Therefore, if Joseph would have decided to go through with the ceremony, Mary would have stated that he didn't want to make her a public example. The public example would have been Mary being stoned in front of her father's house. So you may ask, well, how do you know this? Well, we go to Matthew chapter one, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. So clearly, Matthew 1 and 19 refers to Joseph as Mary's husband. As I've shown you in Deuteronomy chapter 22, marriage according to the Hebrew or Israelite law is consummated by physical relations or sex between the man and the woman. So now we're back at the Zonervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 345, and it states marriage is an intimate personal union to which a man and a woman consent, consummated, which is sex, and continually nourished by sexual intercourse and perfected in a long life partnership of mutual love and commitment. It is also a social institution regulated by the word of the Most High and by the laws and customs which a society develops to safeguard its own continuity and welfare. So clearly we can see as day that marriage is consummated by sexual intercourse. Therefore, in order for Joseph to be called Mary's husband, they had to have physically come together through sexual intercourse. When you go back to Matthew 1 and 20, you can clearly see that Mary is referred to as Joseph's wife. So in this portion, we're going to read from the Holy Bible, the 1611 edition of the King James Bible. We will be reading from the Apocrypha. And the Apocrypha, which is the, uh, the books that were taken out, I believe, in the 1800s by the Protestants. We will read Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, 1 through 5. And it reads... I myself also am a mortal man, like to all and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compact in blood of the seed of man. Key word, the seed or sperm of a man. So this nonsense of a immaculate conception is just a false Babylonian comedic you know, doctrine. Some say it goes back to Nimrod and Semiramis and Tammuz, which is the Christ on the left hand side that the majority of the world worship unbeknownst to them or Horus or Haru. And to not get too much off topic, you know, the Christ on the left hand side is the world savior. We know that from reading the scriptures in context, we know that Hamishiach was a nationalistic figure for the nation of Israel, the two split kingdoms. You have to understand this. If not, then you'll get caught up into the many false assertions and false doctrines. So now picking back up at verse two, the seed, which is the sperm of a man and the pleasure that comes with sleep, meaning sex or consummation. Verse three. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice 
I uttered was crying as all others do. I was nursed in swallowing clothes and that with cares. Verse five, for there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. I repeat, for there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. Now I highlighted the word king. Because what do we say in the New Testament? That Jesus or Yahweh Shai is the king of kings. So in order to be a king, you have to be birthed through a female, through a man's seed. Because the Hebrews, the lineage is traced from father to son, the Y chromosome. I get why the church would take this out. Because it goes against their doctrine of a virgin birth. I see why they would take it out to confuse the chosen, the elect. The descendants of the nation of Israel, the Israelites and so forth, the saints. Now we know that in this life or in this realm, there has to be natural law, which is man and woman. Too many times in this society, we see the broken home where the woman is uplifted with the help of the government and so forth. Welfare and men are out of the homes in prison strung out suicide and so forth we see this with the scriptures also how they've taken out joseph because we know his lineage is through solomon through the house of david and so forth which the hamishiach came through the lineage of david then it has to be traced to the man's seed which is his biological father now i'm going to pick up at verse six for all men have one entrance into life, which is the womb or the matrix and the like going out. I repeat, for all men have one entrance into life and the like of going out. So it takes a man and a woman to have entrance into this realm that the Most High created. But the concept of virgin births was nothing new among ancient world, among the various nations. As we can see, the pagan goddess Isis and Horus or Heru. We also have the Roman Catholic Mary or Black Madonna with child, supposedly Jesus. Again, also, we notice the sun disc above the head, which denotes the sun worship or illumination. Also to take in consideration the various nations that also have the concept of the divine mother and divine child or the mother goddess and child in many different religions, cults and sects and so forth. But when we really read the scriptures, when we read Genesis chapter 9, verse 26, we know that that is the God of Shem. And through Shem, the Shemitic Hebrews, the Israelites, or the saints, his chosen and his holy people, the lineage of Shem is where Christ will come from. And that's only done through man and woman sexual intercourse, physical relations, and so forth. So this will end part one, but part two, we're going to look into the Babylonian comedic mystery religion, as we can see right here in the book, and also the various nations that attend to this doctrine and the various statues from the Catholics and so forth and Christianity and whatnot. But peace and shalom. Doctrine of the virgin birth of Jesus. Why does this doctrine of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ matter? It matters so much. One preacher, Dr. Uh, Charles Stanley, tells us that the virgin birth, like a, uh, the virgin birth, like a Jesus' resurrection from the dead, ranks as one of the Bible's most amazing miracles. Isn't it so? It's an amazing miracle. The virgin birth. Resurrection, both of them are amazing <laughs> miracles. Many reject the idea outright, while others despise it as non-essential to their understanding of the Savior. But a person cannot believe the word of God while rejecting its claim that the Lord was born by a virgin woman. You cannot. Number one. The doctrine of the virgin birth teaches us that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. That is, when Mary conceived Jesus, she had never had any relationship with a man.